Hey everybody, it's Andy from the Aureli Radio Podcast. I'm here today to show you a little bit of tech. Um, today, I've decided to upgrade my Synology disk station. Uh, I have 12 possible drives, and I've got 8 6-terabyte drives and 4 2-terabyte drives. I have acquired another 6-terabyte drive, and I'm going to replace one of the 2-terabyte drives with the 6. So what I've done already is I've removed the 2 terabyte drive and inserted uh, in its place, in its little chassis carrier, one of the 6 terabyte drives. If you have one of these, then you've already populated the drives and you already know what that's all about. So what I've done here is I've got the screenshot from uh, the Synology disk station and I'm going to pull up the drives just to let you, well, Let's see here. It says right here that system volume swap on CSN, Calvin Services Network, SAN, storage area network, has entered degraded mode. Okay, and that's because I pulled a drive. Uh, volume 1 SHR, which is the Synology Hybrid RAID. We're using Synology Hybrid RAID BTRFS. That's kind of important because that's how this works, because it can work with... Um, drive sizes that are different from one another, including different makes and models and things like that. Um, I'm using white label, you know, very generic six terabyte drives. Mostly they're enterprise grade, some of, but it, it's still questionable exactly where they, they come from. I have actually purchased them from a company called Go Hard Drive. They're actually really affordable. So even if they die, uh, I've got them in RAID and I can replace it. So I've already had to do that once. I've got one, uh, actually several that are uh, in between on RMA journeys. Okay, <clears throat> so as I was saying, let's go to the drives. Uh, you can access that uh, multiple ways. In in this particular case, I'm just I've got them uh, linked up here for storage manager. So that will usually drop you to overview, and you can see here, attention, one or more volumes, disk groups, iSCSI LUNs, SSD caches are degraded. We recommend replacing failing drives with healthy ones. Okay, that's kind of important. We've got to figure that out here. So volume one degraded. There's 18.8 uh, .8 terabytes occupied and 43.6 terabytes of the total. I have one unused disk. I have removed disk four. So that unused disk is the new one that I popped in. Now this one just came straight out of the shrink wrap. So I have to make sure that it's okay. So I will go down to HDD SDD, which is the hard disk drive or solid state disk. And I will find, ah, disk four. That is the one that states that it is not initialized. Everyone else says normal, normal. Okay, so total volume capacity. Because even though it says six terabytes in the formatted capacity, it'll only read 5.5. That's perfectly normal. We accept that in life. So I'm looking at this and say, okay, well, I need to figure that out. So I'll go to health info. And this will give me access to the smart data for the drive. Um, smart is a onboard diagnostic that the drive basically is continuously running of itself. It, uh, it can track things of how long the drive has been powered up, how many times the drive has been power cycled, uh, number of remounts, sector scans, uh, moved, moved data from, uh, from bad sectors, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Lots of stuff, including temperature, as we can see here. Uh, these drives, this drive is currently running at 100 degrees Fahrenheit, 38 degrees centigrade. Uh, it doesn't have any SMA lifespan because it just went in. Power on time, zero hours. Uh, actually, I've noticed that this screen doesn't really tell you a whole lot. It's very generic, so you kind of have to go over to Smart Test. And I have already run a quick test. The quick test goes fairly quick. Uh, so there's a normal test right here. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. Last test result, normal. Right. Okay. So let's go over to Smart Info. That way it'll actually pull the data real quick here. Okay, so raw read rate. Raw data zero, so there aren't any yet. There is one start-stop count, so this is a brand new drive according to everything. Power cycle count once. Unknown attributes, who knows what that is. Temperature in Celsius, and that's it. So otherwise, it thinks that it's a, it's quite the healthy drive. You won't really know until you put some load on it. 
Um, so hopefully nothing happens here. I am taking a bit of a risk by doing this, by having a Synology hybrid RAID in a uh, single drive redundancy com capacity. So it's SHA1, uh, SHR, sorry, SHR1. I was thinking the uh, encryption methods, SHA1. Okay, so we can run an extended test, but those take forever. I think it'll yeah, 759 minutes. I'm not gonna make you wait that long. I'm not gonna wait myself that long. Um, quick test. It should take only about two minutes, and that's that's about right. So I've already done that, and it didn't come back with anything abnormal. So we're gonna we're gonna let it run. So now I have to go back to my volume because that's how I have it created here. So as we see, lots of red text, Synology Hybrid Rate SHR SHR with data protection of one disk fault tolerance. The space is degraded. We suggest you replace the failing hard disk with a healthy one for repair. The disk size is, must be equal to or greater than 1862 gigabytes. That is the original size of the drives that I put in. One of the things to know about the Synology Hybrid RAID is that you have to start with the small drives, and then you can put bigger drives in. So basically, it, uh, it formats the system to look at drive sizes that are of that size, and then it can expand and deal with the larger drives whereas otherwise if you started with the big drives it doesn't it's never going to be able to look at smaller drives and make that work so that's the only real big caveat to this is you have to start with the, lo the smaller drives when you get started okay so file system status degraded because it's missing a drive and it did start beeping i've already disabled that because well that was annoying uh so number of failed disks i've just got the one so it says one two three oh and it misses four, and then five, six, seven, eight, nine th through twelve. Okay, so at this point, I will then go to manage, and it the the very first thing because the only thing it's going to give you is repair. That's what we'd like to do, repair. It already sees the next drive that I've popped in there, so it's automatically selected that, and that's all I really want to do. Hit next. All the data on the selected disk will be erased. Are you sure you want to continue? I am sure, because that's what I got the drive for. It is empty. So then we say, okay. Okay, and here's the confirmation step. Select a disk four, volume one, repair, about uh, capacity. Now, no, see that number? That is a bigger number than the total that I have. Because what it's going to do is it's then going to dr dynamically expand the total usable space into the drive. There is a um, Synology disk calculator. Let me find that. Um, there it is, okay. Just to show you, RAID calculator. This is a very handy thing that they do here. So what I, and they've actually uh, just added 10 terabyte uh, drive sizes to this, which is amazing, but okay. We, uh, we digress. So we're going to do SH, SHR, the Synology Hybrid RAID, okay? And we've got uh, 12 drives here. So I'm going to select a two terabyte, a two terabyte, a two terabyte, a two terabyte, and then six, 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 six. Okay, so that says that I should have about a 50 terabyte space with a six terabyte um, used for protection. That's the index so that it can rebuild the drives that are missing. So if I take away one of those and put another six terabyte in its place, I go up to 54. So pretty slick. Let's see if we get rid of that one. Let's, uh, let's add that two terabyte back. So that was 56. See, I get a whole six terabytes more by just adding this one drive because I've got the three two terabytes. So that equals six terabytes of space. Adding the six. I'm basically, um, I'm doing good mathematics for, uh, for this space. So this is really worth it to me. I get another six terabytes by just replacing one drive. Um, so it's, it's well worth the, uh, the effort here, but this, uh, this is really slick. Uh, you can also do SHR, SHR, saying that five times fast, SHR two, uh, and that is a two disk redundancy, which is why the, un the space used for pr uh, protection is 12 terabytes. So, and that, that drops it significantly down down to uh, 44 terabytes if that's what I was doing. Um, 
up to 48 terabytes. So it's uh, it's still adding that six terabytes. So it's um, it's a good deal to do this kind of thing. Oh boy, I want those 10 terabytes though. Yeah, we've got to let those prices come down and reliability come in. Okay, so that's what I'm going to do here. So I will then have about 49.07 terabytes in the entire raid. So then I just hit apply. I mean, it's really, it's kind of dead simple at this point, which is why I switched over to this device versus having an in, in chassis raid card, which is what I had before. I had um, a company called Rocket Raid. Uh, they make, they make some really decent cards and, and fantastic for throughput, but boy, if you have any problems with those drives, uh, I had, I had some real issues getting it recovered. So this entire process here has, uh, has been very expensive because I had to buy a new chassis and move everything over. And, uh, yeah, it's been several months of, of this kind of thing. So if, if you listen to, uh, to my radio show, then you'll know that some of that pain has been, been there, but, um, uh, yeah, it's, it's a labor of love because I'm a geek and this is what we do. So then it says repairing disk. So it's initialized and it's just going to do this. This is probably going to take two days because that's just how long it's going to take to now spread all of that data from all the other drives into it and allow for the, the index of all those redundant array of independent devices that's what raid stands for these days um for that index to spread across all of those independent devices uh then there's there's a bit of a hoodoo voodoo you know secret sauce that they do that will allow it to work with multiple drive sizes so that's what we have here so i hope that this has been helpful for you and uh that you too may consider getting a synology raid device uh they're they're pretty slick um there are some little bits and pieces so it may not be as dead simple for you as say a um a drobo but if you're a true geek and you're ready to do this then you too might enjoy this in synology uh this is uh, now repairing, so it is basically doing a consistency check, and it will be doing that for a while. And that's moving the data over incrementally. I think we can see, if I go over to my resource monitor here, loading, loading, loading. Now, th this will also prevent me from using the full capacity uh, of the network and all the volume speed. So performance accessing, uh, and also writing to the, the disks will be limited. Um, here we have utilization at 97%. So it's gonna be using these drives for quite some time. The disk utilization is up from what it typically is as well. Um, and, and, that's, and that's really about it. So we'll just, uh, we'll let this run. And if you have any questions, go ahead and email me at uh, Andy Cowan, A-N-D-Y-C-O-W-E-N at AndyCowan.com. Or you can hit me at the uh, podcast address at OReallyRadioPodcast at gmail.com. Also, uh, don't forget to watch us on every Friday streaming through Facebook Live for uh, O'Reilly Radio or also out at our Twitch channel at O'Reilly Radio Show at Twitch. And we'll see you next week, about uh, Friday, about 9.30 p.m. Eastern Time. Thanks, everybody. Bye-bye.